We just made it to Semida, which is the first stop on our way to Danakil Depression. Uh, it's a small group today. So we are super, super excited for that. It's off season. Off season, so it's good and bad. It's good and bad. It's gonna be really, 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 really hot, but then it's a small group, so it's kind of like we get our own personal tour. Yeah, so. happy. <laughs> we are really, really excited about that. Hopefully we won't regret it a little bit later when it's too hot and our <laughs> cameras don't work. We can handle the heat. We can handle the heat, but we want to be able to get shots, so if the cameras get too hot and we can't film, that will suck. Stay tuned! Yodi, my friend and fellow YouTuber, and I set out on a three-day journey to the hottest place on Earth, called the Danakil Depression. We have an eight-hour drive to our first location. As you can see, our car is completely packed with mattresses and water and all kinds of stuff. The Danakil Depression is located in northeast Ethiopia, on the border of Eritrea and Djibouti, in a region called Afar. Situated in the Afar Triangle, it stretches across 62,000 miles of arid terrains in one of the lowest points in Africa. During these next three days, we were about to witness some of the most unusual and intriguing landscapes in the world, including a place that has often been referred to as Mars. We were going to be roughing it for the next few days. No toilets, no showers, just one with nature. As I said earlier, it's been titled as the hottest place on earth, and as luck would have it, we happened to go during one of the hottest months we could have ever possibly gone. We've been driving for hours, and we finally came to the Salt Lakes, and lo and behold, this is where all of the camels are able to finally have some water and drink, and it is so hot out here. Like literally, it's on fire. My phone, even charging on the way over here, was, was saying hot and I wasn't even using it. I'd say within an hour of being on this journey, our phone started acting up because of how hot it was. We just stopped for lunch. It is so hot, 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 hot. And we're inside some kind of shaded area, obviously, and it looks like everybody is just shirtless and... Uh, Kind of lounging, taking a break from the sun. I mean, it's it's hot. How you feeling? Hot. <laughs> I'm a second in that. Since we've been driving, there's been like no place to go to the bathroom. So there's not really like any big rocks that we could stop at or there's no big bushes to squat behind. So now we can finally go to the bathroom here. We are back on the road. It got so hot that my phone literally died. It would not work anymore whatsoever. And then it was so hot that Yodi gave me one of her dresses. So now I look like a local. <laughs> And I'm much, much cooler. It is, it's on fire out here. Fire. But it's still a good time. It didn't really click in our heads that we were embarking to the hottest place on earth during the hottest time of the year. And it might sound like we are complaining, but the heat was really unforgiving. I had never experienced this type of heat before. It was so hot that the inside of the car wouldn't stay cool despite the AC pumping. We weren't getting any service on our cell phones and even limited our use because they would start to overheat, which then drain the battery. Since we weren't going to have any electricity, we needed to conserve our batteries as much as possible. An important tip for those that want to do this trip, bring a few power banks. I brought two RAV Power power banks for the next three days and they were responsible for keeping my phone, camera, drone and batteries charged. As dry and desolate of an environment this is, it is actually home to the nomadic Afar people. The Afar people are an ethnic group living in parts of the Horn of Africa, which include Ethiopia, Eritrea, and Djibouti. They are resilient camel herders and salt miners, surviving in one of the toughest regions in Ethiopia. I was absolutely amazed at how they could survive out here with little vegetation and water and the unforgiving scorching heat. Another, I don't know, 
know, maybe two hours. And I came to this area that has like dry, cracked desert lands. Even though the, the land is like super, super barren, it's so beautiful. It's a long, lengthy journey in between each site, but there is a lot of different kinds of beauty. The volcanic rock, to the desert, to the dry, cracked ground, it's really neat. And this is just the beginning. You ain't seen nothing yet. We've arrived! This is where we're camping for the night. Out in the open, out in, under the stars. I love it. I absolutely love it. Made it. We made it. Yes. Looking all lovely and beautiful and hot. <laughs> it was 50 degrees. Are you excited about sleeping underneath the stars tonight? No. <laughs> are you serious? I'm hot. I'm not thinking about the stars. We are in the hottest place on earth during the hottest time of the year. <laughs> to me, this is just. I, this is what I love. I love, 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 love this kind of experience. This is where we'll be sleeping. This is made with animal skin. And then we get our cots or our mattresses. While we were setting up our beds, there was a chef cooking us dinner in the middle of nowhere. And I must say, it was very tasty. in the morning we all got up around five o'clock for breakfast after a pretty hot night sleep the wind stopped so it was it was hot it was a hot it was a hot night uh, there are a few of us in our group that do not feel good the heat has really gotten to people one of which miss Yodit in the back how are you feeling your tummy better my tummy is fine, it's just, I just feel, I just feel like throwing up. I think it's just the heat. She hasn't been feeling good so la since last night, but there's going to be some amazing views today. Yes. So Thank she's going to be feeling much, much better. I know it. Ryan, how are you feeling? Feeling great, yeah, no problems. Good. <laughs> and Abu, our driver, how are you doing this morning? Good. Good? Yeah. Did you sleep good last night? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? yeah. Ish. Okay. Ish. So anyway, we are on our way to the salt flats to try to um, see the sunrise. Day two is going to be a really big day today. This is Lake Asale, one of the most mesmerizing salt flats in Danakil Depression. This region was actually a desert that was once covered by water centuries ago that has now evaporated and left behind thick beds of salt. Salam! So amazing. Absolutely stunning. Stunning. This region is actually desert land that was once covered by water centuries ago that has now evaporated and left behind these thick beds of salt, making for a very surreal landscape. It's just magical here. It's just magical. And now we are heading to the place that I've been waiting on this whole trip, Dalau, also known as Mars. Now we are walking about 30 minutes to Dalal, which is the third lowest place on earth and the hottest place on earth. Is that right? Yeah, this is <laughs> one of the hottest places on earth. Welcome to the Mackin Depression. Yay! So it's getting really hot again. 
hopefully my phone will last. I don't know, it's already kind of given out on me, but uh, we're passing on the way to Dalal, different landscape. Behind me, all of this area is lava rock that's mixed with different minerals and has caused all these like really cool formations. The guide said it's over 600 years old. In this portion of the trip, we have a security guard that is with us at all times, just for safety and our protection. <coughs> we are at Dalal. <coughs> the sulfur is very, very strong here. Behind me, it's smoking is active. We're not allowed to go back there, but the closer we get to it, the stronger the smell. Oof. <coughs> Dalal means colorful place in Afar language. Uh, everything you see is different minerals. There's four colors. The white is salt. The, the yellow is sulfur. The green is magnesium. No, the green is potassium. And the red is magnesium. But this is the hottest place. If you come here in August, it's very, very strong smell. They recommend you wearing a scarf, which I'm not, but I need. So hot, but so cool. Beneath the surface of the Danakil Depression, there are extensive underground water supplies that are being heated from the underground volcanoes. The hot water rises to the surface, bringing up all these different minerals and causing the rocks on the surface to dissolve and colorful formations to be made. This is the area called Dalal. Everyone went back to the car and I decided to stay and try to get some of these drone shots, which about killed me. So I hope you guys can appreciate some of this aerial footage. I jumped at that. I'm sure many of y'all are thinking to yourselves, why in the hell is she wearing a dress? And it was totally for the gram. The price we pay as content creators. It definitely made my adventure more difficult though. It's so hot. I lost. I lost all of my superpower. It's, 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 it's so hot. Do not try to be cute. <laughs> Do not, because you will be ugly afterwards. <laughs> if you lasted more than me, I was, <sighs> I died. It was good, and then at the very end, the walk, the 30 minute walk on the way back in that like blazing sun, it almost killed me. I didn't know if I was gonna make it. Now we're at a really, really big salt lake that's bubbling because of the potassium 
They say that this salt lake is very healing for the skin. So this is bubbling potassium. It's not boiling, it's bubbling because of gas. It's called methane gas. Methane gas. Yeah. And you can hear the sound, it's still bubbling because of gas. Uh -huh. And people use it for medicine. If something happens on their skin, people use it for medicine. It's not scientific, but it's still working. Yeah. So like it heals wounds? Yeah. Now we just got to this little pool in the middle of nowhere. It is water, salt water, so you float in it. So we're gonna go for a swim. the best surprise. <laughs> After watermelon and lunch, we make our way out of this extreme heat and head toward a different kind of heat, straight to the volcanoes, which the main one is called Urtale. We are getting closer to the volcano. All of the, the rocks around us are turning really, really black. The temperature says it's 51 degrees out. That's in Celsius. I have no idea what that means in Fahrenheit, but really, really, really hot. I just have to talk a minute about an iPhone. I am so, so disappointed on this trip because the entire time the I my iPhone has overheated. It, both of our iPhones, where it's not charging, it's not doing anything. It runs out of battery, it gets hot, it goes blank, this entire, entire trip. And it's like when I need it the most, right? Of course we're in a hot situation, but Ryan over here has a Google Pixel and his phone has not overheated one single time. I mean, how does that make any sense? Google send us phones. And this is where we will begin our trek to the volcanoes. So they laid down some mattresses for us. We are relaxing for an hour or so until the sun goes down. And we're having some cholo, colo, a little snack, and some biscuits. We are beginning now the hike to the volcano. The weather is a lot nicer. The sun's almost set, and by the time we get to the volcano, it's gonna be dark. So hopefully we'll be able to see some lava. Uh, the hike is only supposed to be about 30 to 40 minutes. So that's not too bad. We made it to the top. We gotta do a little bit more hiking, and then the volcano's over there. I can hear the bubbles though. I can hear like the sound of the lava like spitting or, or bubbling. It's pretty cool. And right now we're walking on dried lava from an eruption that happened a long time ago. There are three volcanoes, two newer and little ones, and the main one is Urtale. volcano gas for Atale. It's really, really strong. So you need a scarf to mask some of the smell. This is a new volcano. It's only been around for about a year. Incredible. 
it has no name yet. That's how new it is. So this is like newer lava, yeah. right? Maybe it's it's not longer than one week. The trip is over. We did it. It was not easy. It was one of the hardest trips. I found out that the locals call this the gates of hell. We came to the hottest place on earth during the hottest time of the year. I mean, it's part of the adventure. It is definitely one of the most amazing landscapes. The lava, the volcanoes, Dalal that looks like Mars, the salt, the minerals, the bubbling of, of all these different chemicals. And it is definitely one of the most amazing tours I've ever done. Such an amazing trip. Thank you, World Sun Ethiopia Tours. We did it. We did it. <laughs> uh, going back to Addis.